Today I built a new evaporator for this thing. Um, it's my modular freezing unit, a quarter horsepower compressor, R290, barbecue grade propane, uh, capillary tube, 031 inside diameter, uh, four feet long. Um, got a glycol, glycol refrigerant, propylene glycol in that bucket there, about 20 pounds of it. There's some little containers of water and stuff in there. The uh, coil is descended in that glycol refrigerant. The last uh, couple of setups that I had, I was utilizing this coil here, which was just kind of leftovers from other projects. Uh, it's about 88 inches, uh, that little half inch, uh, kind of sort of a accumulator there at the top I just added on because I was having a problem with uh, too small of uh, volume for that size of compressor. That thing would drop the low side pressure far too low. Um, built a larger evaporator, it's about 210 inches uh, which is well, I don't know, what, roughly two and a half times that that uh, that length and volume of that one over there uh, minus the accumulator. And um, lo and behold, I mean it does work better, um, maintain higher pressures, uh, runs more smoothly. It's easier to control the uh, the amount of refrigerant in there, so it uh, the compressor the whole system works on a wider range of of, of temperatures without accidentally overcharging it. Um, or it, on the flip side of things. Uh, the, the charge uh, works on a wider range of temperatures uh, such that as it's pulling the temperature down, there's not an excessive amount of superheat, and then once it gets down to low temperatures, <clears throat> uh, it's not uh, you know sucking liquid back to the compressor and frosting back so much. So uh, the charge size isn't uh, as big of an issue. Now, I've been running this thing for a couple of hours. Uh, it took me about... Uh, uh, let's see, an hour 39 minutes to get down from 75 degrees down to um, uh, zero degrees coolant temperature and then uh, I shut it off for 44 minutes till it got up to 10 turned it back on for 32 minutes got it down to negative two um, turn it back on for um, 32 so so on hour 39 off 44 on 32 minutes off an hour and seven minutes and then on for uh, 40 minutes. So um, definitely getting that holdover there. Uh, the glycol likes to uh, to hold that cooling capacity quite well and continues to refrigerate. Um, I kind of suspect that uh, the first time that it was off for 44 minutes, the second time it was off for an hour and seven minutes, um, and I expect that, uh, that, that holdover to last longer and longer. Uh, now keep in mind that there's some water in there that's being frozen so once I got down below 32 degrees Fahrenheit um, uh, cabinet air temperature um, there's all that late heat um, uh, cooling work being done to freeze the water so um, once all that water is thoroughly frozen I expect that holdover to last a lot longer now I gotta go to dinner so I'm just shutting it off and uh, come back here in two or three hours and see how well it, it held over and then run it some more. So uh, definitely a big improvement over the uh, uh, previous setup. Um, definitely have too large of a, com a capacitor st or compressor still. Um, so I'm going to address that with some of these smaller uh, 80 or 90 watt compressors uh, that'll work much better. This thing pulls about uh, amp and a half to two amps uh, at 119 volts AC. So anyway, thanks for watching.